Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today I'm joined by Nate Tracy, an application specialist here at the company. Today, Nate will be walking us through how to extract a slope in Global Mapper. All right, Nate, show us what you got. Thanks, Rachel. Global Mapper makes it very easy to extract slope data from an elevation grid or terrain layer in both vector and raster supported data formats. So we have here a terrain grid at a 10 meter resolution. Right now that's displayed using the Atlas shader, which is just going to show us uh, all of the cells in this terrain layer based on their elevation above sea level. But we can really easily change that to slope using the slope shader right here. So here you can see our terrain layer now displayed using slope where lighter colors correlate with flatter areas in the study area um, with a lower slope gradient and of course darker areas are going to correspond to steeper portions uh, of the map. We can use the feature info tool here uh, to click on different pixels within this uh, grid here and that's going to also give us the exact slope values uh, for each of those cells in both uh, degrees and in percentage. So if we want to extract vector data from uh, our terrain grid here as a slope, we can use the vectorize raster tool right here. Um, so say for our purposes, maybe we want to know what are the flattest portions of this study area where it might be uh, appropriate uh, or cost effective to, uh, to build, to do a construction project. So we want to make sure we keep our range of elevation uh, or slope here, in our case, uh, pretty low. So we'll set a maximum of five degrees. So anything between zero, which is perfectly flat, and five degrees of slope, uh, we're gonna say is appropriate to do construction. Uh, we can also add a smoothing factor so that the output uh, area features or polygon features that this tool is gonna create uh, are not too choppy, not too pixelated. They're gonna be nice and smooth. Uh, and we can also set this uh, filter here to discard any areas that are smaller than a given threshold. In this case, we're gonna say half a hectare. So any polygon smaller than half a hectare is not going to be part of the output. It's too small. We'll go ahead and name this layer flat areas. And once we've got all of that set up, we go ahead and click OK. And very quickly, uh, Global Mapper is going to create those polygons where we know now that the terrain is flat enough to build. Uh, so that's one way to extract slope from a terrain layer uh, in a vector format. We can also do this using uh, raster formats by using the raster reclassification command right here in the analysis toolbar. So we go ahead and click on that. That's going to pull up the raster reclassify window here. We've got a histogram showing the distribution of slope values across uh, our study area here. Uh, so we know in this case it goes to about 42 degrees. Uh, so now we want to start adding rules for raster reclassification. So to do that, we just click here in the raster reclassification rules field. Uh, so again, maybe we want to know what are the flatter areas where it might be safe or appropriate to build. So again, we'll say 0 to 5 degrees, give that an output index of 1, and we'll call this optimal, meaning optimal locations to build, and give that a nice green color. Uh, as our second rule, maybe we say areas between 5 and 15 degrees where maybe it's still possible to build, uh, but it might be a little bit more expensive uh, or a little bit more cost and, and time intensive to build. So we'll call this moderate uh, and give that a sort of maybe yellowish color. And lastly, we want to apply a criterion where it's just too steep to build. So anything between 15 and 45 degrees, we're going to say is just too steep. Uh, and we'll give that a red color in this case. So we've got our raster reclassification rules set here. Um, we can save this raster reclassification definition uh, to a file in case we need to reclassify uh, a terrain layer based on uh, this, these slope inputs again in the future. Um, and we have the option to save this as a palette image or as a single band color image. Uh, we've only got three colors here, so we'll go ahead and use a palette image, and we'll just name this slope classes. 
Uh, so everything looks good now. We've got our rules and we've got uh, a name for our layer here. So we can click validate to make sure that it's okay. We'll get this little green check mark letting us know it's good to go. And we click okay. We don't need to save the definition in this case. Really quickly, Global Mapper is uh, going to reclassify that raster layer. And now you can see when we use the feature info tool, we can see uh, how those uh, index values look now with just three. We can open this also in the 3D viewer. Um, because this is just a, a palette raster, it looks like a 2D image, it's flat. But of course we can turn on our terrain layer again and Global Mapper is just going to drape that reclassified raster over the original terrain layer. So that gives us a better sense and, and kind of visually augments uh, our understanding of what slope looks like uh, in our study area. Nate, thank you so much for showing us that. I know that our users will find it very useful. To learn more about Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, please visit bloomrebelgeo.com today. And as always, we hope that you'll join us for our next episode of Ask the Experts.